What's going on guys? Brian's here. Today is Saturday, June 4th, 2022, and the market is closed. Jumping right into it, what does it mean when a trader says they're analyzing their risk or they're assessing their risk or they're looking at a risk profile? What we're looking at right here is the Russell 2000 or the RUT. This is just the index for the Russell 2000. Some of you guys might know the IWM, which is the ETF. Just know that that's pretty much the equivalent of what you're probably more familiar with is the SPY, which is the ETF for the S&P 500, and the index is referred to as the SP. The SPX tends to be 10 times the size of the SPY, so the RUT is 10 times the size of the IWM. It's just a little bit more diversified by the SPY, whereas the SPY or the S&P 500 is 500 companies, and the Russell has 2,000 companies into it and in it, and it's often referred to as the mid caps. You don't you won't find Apple or Microsoft, Amazon or Google in the Russell 2000. So what we're looking at right here is uh, the daily time frame. So let's just plot at least one level on the chart so we have something here. So this is just the uh, 20. 2020 uh, high right before the COVID plummet right here. And then we can see we had a little bit of a bounce and this is a uh, current price action. The orange level on my chart is the 50 day moving average. And this one right here is the 200 day moving average. I opened up a trade on Russell on the Russell, which is referred to as an iron fly. So let's just jump over and look at my risk profile. This right here, it's a market neutral strategy or in which, at least the way in which I structured it, it was intended to be non-directional. So it's not unbalanced. It's not a broken wing. If you don't know what an uh, iron fly is, it's just if we come down right here the order is you short two strikes that are pretty much at the money so in this case i was shorting the 1840 call and put so i shorted one of that strike right here 1840 and then i shorted one of the 1840 call and with that credit that's being received i'm then buying an out the money call and then i'm buying an out the money uh, put which is essentially going to create what's referred to as the wings so that's a little bit you, you'd probably want to check out a couple videos after this one on just the iron fly but the strategy in which i'm using is not necessarily relevant to the concept for this video. It's about risk management and how a trader is usually going to be assessing their risks on if they think something's too risky, what will they do to adjust it? What we have right here, this is the Thinkorswim platform. This is the risk profile on Thinkorswim. If you go to your analyze tab, you'll see this right here as a subcategory and you just press risk profile. What we have here is the current positions delta. So this would be my delta. This would be my theta. This would be my vega. This right here is the PNL uh, on the day. This is the PNL on the open. And this right here are what's referred to as slices. So what I have right here is this middle slice right here is the last traded price for the Russell. So this is where we close that on Friday. What I usually like to do is I put I switch this over to the dollar sign and you can put in an exact amount in which you'd like to see as if a uh, price changes. So I usually, for something like the Russell, I'm just gonna put 35 points because I'll show you why in a second, but this is just saying take the last price right here and add 35 points to it. And then I'm also subtracting 35 points to it and that's what's showing this right here. So that's how we get these three slices, the middle one being the last traded price. This right here is the uh, profit and loss at expiration. And this right here is what's referred to as the T plus zero line. And this is pretty much my PL at the uh, current uh, time. So, and let's just change this because usually it's a little bit easier to just say green. So the green line is the current p l so that's what we see right here if price was to move up 35 points it's saying the position would be down 250 dollars and if price was to come back down 35 points i would be up 204 dollars or the position would be up 204 dollars. i actually have three of these i trade on two different accounts or multiple different accounts this is just think of some account i always like to open up at least one on think of some because it makes it easier to record the videos and demonstrate things whenever i'm sharing screenshots the platform which i use for larger size is referred to as silex now if we jump over to the chart and let's get in a little bit more uh, nuance right here and let's jump to a smaller time frame. So this is the 15 minute time frame. And what was interesting to me, at least towards the end of the week on the Russell was the fact that this is uh, it was a short week. So this would be Tuesday. This would be Wednesday. This would be Thursday. And this would be Friday here. What made me a little bit nervous is if we just look at the retracements for the Russell, it did not really retrace that far. It didn't pull back in comparison to let's check out the SPX, which would be the um, S&P 500. And as that loads up, we come right here. We can see the entire market made a, a very huge, uh, sorry about that, let's just zoom back out. It made a pretty huge rally as we know from last week into this week, but let's just look at the last uh, couple trading days from last week. The, the uh, S&P 500, made a nice strong rally, but then it pulled back. This would be a 50% retracement and it actually pulled all the way back, penetrating the 61% retracement level. And then it ended up closing around this area. In comparison, let's look at, take a look at the NDX, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, which is a little bit more of a tech focus index. As we pull up right here, let's just 
zoom in right here. So this is 100 stocks are listed in this. We can see the retracement from here to here was very deep. So the fact that I'm in a trade in the Russell, and if we go back to the rut, hopefully that provides a little bit of clarity. Let's just jump to this right here. You can see now we have a little bit of context. You see the rut should have pulled back down to about here, at least the 50% retracement, but it didn't. It held around this 23.6% retracement. That's what's referred to as relative strength because it didn't pull back with the rest of the market. So this relative strength is something that's a little bit of concern to me because I'm essentially playing a trade saying it should be staying within a certain range. If I were to just change this right here, I can show you guys this is essentially what the butterfly looks like on the chart. So I'm shorting two of these, which is referred to as the body, as we talked about before. I'm long this call and then I'm long this put right here. And this is what's creating that structure. So it looks something like this when we look at a risk profile. So the market or the Russell right now is all the way up here, whereas I want it to be more within this vicinity or even somewhere down here because the trade was structured to give it a little bit more room to the downside in terms of how the Greeks were structured. So with us being all the way up here, I'm concerned with if we were to gap up over the weekend and let's just say the Russell was to rally, how much will I be down and is it a safe trade for me to hold? So if we go back to the risk profile, you guys can see right here, I'm looking at this and my whole thought process during power hour on Friday is, hmm, if I don't do anything and the Russell actually goes up pretty high, I'm going to be down a lot of money. I'm not going to be comfortable with that. Again, I'm in three of these. So that would be a $750 loss if we went up 35 points. I got 35 points because just looking at a little bit of some stats and data right here. So starting with why did I choose even the Russells? Just because of something that I took note of uh, a little bit earlier uh, last week here is that these are some quantified levels here. This platform, which I'm showing is just quant trading app. It's a platform which I'm actually the lead developer on. So if you're curious, use a little bit of a description. So if you're curious, the link is in the description down below and you can check out the website and learn a little bit more about it here. But what we see right here is the S&P 500 has only been closing within its statistical normal ranges of about 55% this time this time so far for the year, whereas the Russell has been trading about 65% of the time. So I want to be a little bit more non-directional, a little bit more neutral on the Russell because it's trading and it's honoring certain levels a lot clearer. If we come right here now and I just check out some candle stats on it and we're looking at the past 365 trading days, we can see right here that right now the average range for it is about 41 points, but I'm not concerned with about the average range. I want to know what's the net change. So the net change is just a change from the previous candles close to the next candles close. So in other words, from Friday's close to Monday's close, what's it likely to do in terms of its average net range? And that's about 25.69 points. Now, another thing about this is this is 365 days. So let's actually just shrink the sample set because 2020 is 2022 has been a lot more volatile of a, of a year. Let's generate these results and see what we have. So it jumps from 25 all the way up to about 30 points. Now, usually if it does gap up, it usually gaps up around 2.29%. To 2 so this is where I'm getting about a 33 points or so, and I'm just rounding it up to 35 and also trying to account for a little bit of a little bit of what it might do in terms of its range. But again, I'm not so much concerned with the range because I'm just concerned with about the gap up and where we likely to close. If I come down right here and we wanted to see a little bit more information, let's just actually jump and let's check out just Mondays because this is what I'm concerned with how much does it usually do from a Friday into a Monday and let's just sort this from the net change on terms of the positive side so the biggest net change for the year so far has been 60 points but that's kind of a statistical anomaly right here or an outlier if I were to click this and see what did it do or why did it do that I can go back and take a look and maybe see okay so this was a strong downtrend and then it was a gap and it had a kind of a gap and go on this Monday so after heavy selling the entire market kind of exploded here that's not the same conditions in which we're experiencing right now we've already had a little bit of a rally so i would say i'm not so much concerned with this uh, 59 points here and then we have 45 but it seems like all the other time so far for this year is kind of within this range here so around 20 points or so so i think it's a fair assessment to say 30 points 35 points is really going to cover a lot it's going to cover at least two standard deviations in terms of its net change at least for this year if we were to if you're curious and you're a little bit more of a data nerd and you're like okay yeah but maybe you expand the set and let's just jump back to 2020 i don't like to go too far back to 2020 just because of we know what happened the COVID crash kind of broke a lot of the uh, statistical norms and we can kind of see that right here in all of these outliers these are what's within this right here is what's referred to as the one standard deviation that's accounting for 68 percent of all occurrences during this sample set it kind of fits within this realm here this was just essentially the market <laughs> breaking this is a, a market crash here and even on the plus side we can see there's not that many times in which it actually had a net change this was three percent here this was about 2.6 percent so we can get a little bit of stats on this graph here but as we scroll down we can see the average net change is still 25 but now this is where things might get a little bit scary if i were to change it by the net change and put it on the high end we can see there were some times in which it had some huge moves to the upside. However, 
if we look at these dates, these are again 2020. This was right after the market completely crashed, and this was a big gap up here on that Monday. If we were to click this one, we can see that it was also around the same time. So this is all during 2020. If I were to restrict it to just Mondays and then eliminate maybe some of these statistical outliers right here, we kind of fall within this is 2021, 2021 right here. Let's actually out of curiosity see this. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, a little bit of a scary thing here, knowing that it had one day in which it did that on that Monday. But if we don't take into account these right here, so this is we're looking at a sample set of uh, 608 candles, and we can already see where do we hit about 35. So right here hits about 35. So if we don't, if we disregard these up here, and this is 25 entries, I can sort this, you know, and show all but uh, for 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 not making this video too long, 608 sample set right here, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, uh, seventeen, eighteen. So eighteen out of 608 times did it actually have a net change over 35. Again, just trying to prove the case of why I'm using 35 as an example. Even dating all the way back here, it's not that very common or normal for the Russell to do something like of a move of, of that size. So as I come back to this chart here and we look at um, my risk profile, I'm using 35 as my baseline for right now for assessing how much might I be down by by close on uh, Monday. So I can change the dates right here. I already had adjusted it. So if I were to just jump to today's date, we can see I'm actually currently a little bit down in the position right now. But as we jump forward to Monday and I'm thinking, OK, am I comfortable with being down this much? And the answer on Friday was no, because after being aware of the relative strength in it, I did not like that the Russell held up this whole day, it became too much of a risky position for me to just hold over the weekend. So I had a few options. The first one being I can hedge the position by maybe buying a long call to to protect myself. Maybe I can just close the position, take a very small loss. I think the loss at this time was only about forty five dollars or so per per iron fly or an iron fly is just an iron butterfly, just a shorter way of saying uh, iron butterfly. So $45 times three. So I'm down about $140 or whatever, however the math ends up adding up to. And I'm telling myself that's I'm comfortable with that as well within my risk parameters in terms of if you're curious how much the size is on it. This is what it currently looks like from um, option strat, which is a tool, my favorite tool that I like to use for analyzing my spreads and assessing, you know, how they're performing in addition to the analyze tab there. But I use this to, sh to share screenshots within the uh, quant trading app discord. So everything I've kind of just went over, it's kind of out outline in here, even down to the concerns in which I have. These are the retracements, just comparing them of what the concerns I might have and when the trade was opened, uh, why the reasons for opening it. The same thing, which I just showed you guys, it's the 65%. It's pretty appealing for an income strategy. An income generating strategy is just a strategy that's non-directional. It's market neutral. And I'm essentially just trying to get paid by a uh, time decay and not really be concerned about picking a direction in which it's going to go. So as I was assessing that, when I, uh, actually open a trade, it's easy for me to just share these screenshots. So that way a trader can already see how much uh, it's going to cost to do X, Y, Z. And they can decide if it's a trade that they essentially like themselves. So if we come back to options strategy, we can see right here, the position size is about uh, 1200 bucks. But if I just move this up to exactly three, this is how much I'm in. So so being down 195 bucks or so, again, I'm actually not down this much because I opened up the protection, which you guys will see. So being down, we'll say 200 bucks on $3,500. It's not that much right now, relatively speaking, in terms of what I stand to gain from the trade. So let's just reduce this back down to one because I like to use one as an example because it's easy for anybody of any account size can either scale up or scale down. And if the Russell is something that's too large, this is why you trade something like the IWM because the IWM, this would only be about $117. That's how much this uh, butterfly would cost you if you ran it in the IWM versus the Russell. I think you guys pretty much get I think you guys pretty much get the gist between the difference between the Russell and the IWM and essentially how much it costs. Now because it's a credit spread, I sold this iron fly. I'm receiving this credit and I'm looking to let theta pay and let time decay pass and then essentially buy back the spread at a lower price. And that's pretty much how I'm looking to make money on the trade. Now as we come back to here and we look at the profile, and as we said, this ends up being too much of I'm what I'm being comfortable with. So my thought process is if I were to actually um, show you guys, if I remove this, this is what I ended up doing. I added another 
uh, iron fly. So let me actually remove all of these because these are the current positions in which I'm in right now. So I'm removing all the spreads. It started off by me opening up this one, right? And I'm looking at this. Let's jump back to, let's go to today so you guys can see. So down about $64, 65 bucks. And the, the price was getting close to the perimeter of my iron fly and it started making me a little bit nervous. Now, normally I would not be too concerned, but it's the fact that it's showing so much relative strength. It's telling me, my wrist is telling me I need to do something because if I just leave this alone, I'm going to be down way too much money if we were to jump forward in time here that's not going to make me comfortable on top of that what i'm looking at is my delta so you see right here right now the current delta on the trade is negative 0.6 86. That means for every one point that the Russell went up, I'm going to lose $6.86. Now, if the Russell was to go up another 10 points, that's how you guys can do the math. 10 times $6.86 means I'll be down all, uh, over 68 bucks because what happens is the higher and higher price goes, the more negative my delta is going to become because we're going further and further away from the iron fly, which is all the way back here. So if price was to come all the way up here, this delta is going to be significant significantly higher and I'm going to be experiencing more pain until eventually we just get to a point where I can't lose anymore, which would be my max loss. As you guys can see this right here, it's demonstrated. See the delta ends up becoming negative eight. 0.24 as we get up to this price. If I add another slice, I can add it. You can add multiple slices and see what it would be at different breaking points. So as I'm assessing this risk, the next thing I'm doing is I'm planning to be in the trade until about, we'll say about Wednesday. So if I looked at Wednesday, this is still not really necessarily a comfortable feeling to, to be in. So the price, would, how much I would be down would be less by Wednesday because again of time the case so this right here is theta this is essentially how much the spread would be making if the Russell was not to go anywhere and we weren't concerned with the Delta and the uh, implied volatility uh, risk here we're just looking at theta it's going to make about 60 bucks a day and being in three of these that's hundred and eighty dollars a day to hold this trade as long as the Russell is around here if it was to pull back you can see it would actually make a lot more in theta so let's just jump back to Monday because I'm just trying to assess my risk over the weekend what I ended up doing is adding another butterfly. Instead of an iron fly, I added what's referred to as a long call butterfly. And that's essentially this. If I was to remove the previous one, it's just another iron fly, but not as a credit spread. And what I'm doing now is reducing my delta risk because by adding this butterfly, you guys can see the delta on this butterfly right now is three points. So if I was to remove this and we just looked at the original iron fly, it's about six, negative 6.86. By adding this fly, look what it does to the delta. It cuts the delta risk almost down 50%. So I'm essentially cutting down all of my risks by half if the market was to, or if the Russell was to go higher. And now you guys can see that my PL would only be down $158. Without it, my PL will be down 258. And that's the level in which I was not comfortable with being. But once I added this here, I'm telling myself, okay, so by Monday, let's just say the Russell is up 35 points, which it could do because there's a little bit of momentum, there's relative strength, all the technical reasons aforementioned. And this is at market close made me feel a lot more comfortable because I've already assessed my risks. I'm comfortable. I'm not going to be emotional come Monday, even if the Russell was to gap all the way up to here, which it would not do. It's more likely to gap up around five points or so if it actually ended up doing that. But I'm accounting. I'm giving myself 35 points of room. And then I'll obviously come in Monday morning and assess the trade again and see what I need to do. Because if it starts really rallying pretty far, I might just close out the previous one and let price kind of hover around in this vicinity for a while. I will realize the loss on this, but it'll only end up being a loss that is well assessed prior to that and then let's just say the market was to uh, consolidate in this vicinity here i can end up realizing some profits just by holding this and letting time decay eat away at these at the money options in which i shorted here so if we jump back to uh, monday again and let's remove these two the key things to take away from this uh, video is how do you protect yourself from from delta risk how do you manage to trade what things do you want to look for what tools do you want to use know what your average gap ups or gap downs are on the tickers in which you like to trade even if you're not trading non-directional spreads and let's just say you're trading a naked call option and you're swinging a naked call how much does a stock usually gap down if you're wrong if you can assess how much that risk might be maybe you might find in cheap weekly put that you can maybe buy to cut down your risk to the downside obviously you'll be open up more risk to theta because when you buy options you have a negative theta which is why options lose value as time is passing by and uh, if you can get really savvy at 
analyzing your positions this way it's spending less time actually looking at the chart for myself once i'm aware i was watching once it came to this level here and it actually bounced back up i already knew it in my heart i was like oh man i'm gonna have to make some sort of adjustment here because the rest of the market continued to sell off and the russell didn't and the fact that it held right here i was already planning to make some sort of adjustment but i waited all the way until the end of the day to make the decision because i don't want to over trade i want to make sure the adjustment is well calculated i've thought uh, thought it through and i wasn't making an emotional decision just based on price action i don't want to be a slave to price action i much rather be assessing my risk more than anything and analyzing the positions and then saying now with this i'm very comfortable because now if we were to jump to a wednesday you guys can see if the russell is still up here i won't be red anymore i won't necessarily make a ton of money either but i'll be very comfortable and if we did go higher there would be another adjustment in which i would make i would have plenty theta to possibly even buy some sort of call debit spread maybe just buy a naked out the money call on the iwm since it will be much smaller size and then on top of that if the russell just kind of hovers around here this is 320 dollars if it came back to this price 320 dollars times three in which i'm in would be over 950 dollars 960 dollars to be exact and that's going to be a really nice win considering i opened the trade on wednesday so it's a seven day hold and nine hundred dollars on seven days and using um using $350 is great. Now, granted, the spread expires the following Friday, but I'm not planning to hold it for that long because the longer and longer you hold it, obviously there's, there's going to be a lot more profits to be made. What happens is the slope, this this curve right here, because of the gamma exposure, ends up becoming way too uh, slopey, <laughs> as I would say. And yes, there's a lot of profits to be made, but this starts making it feel uncomfortable because it means if the Russell went here and then it bounced back, your PL is going to be fluctuating too much. When we're usually trading a in income based strategies we don't really want too steep of a slope in our uh, t plus zero line we want it to be a lot more smooth even this is a little bit uh slopey right now at least to the upside and i have a lot more room to the downside a uh, ideal scenario would be it just goes up a little bit and then uh by wednesday it just pulls back and it ends up landing right back in this vicinity and if things are looking great i might just take two out of the three contracts off and maybe hold the last one for friday because as you guys can see the profit starts the the t plus zero line remains above what's referred to as the zero line as long as that green line remains above zero i'm essentially making money on a spread like this so anything in this range here is profitable how much profit it is it all depends on where it lands so at this level right here the spread is going to be up around 500 bucks and that's what we see right here so five six hundred and that's what's demonstrated here hopefully this video provides a little bit of context guys on if you are interested in learning more about trading this way i would highly suggest you check out some books on uh, trading option spreads predominantly the options and volatility pricing book by sheldon natenberg is a great one it's a very difficult book if you're now getting started i would suggest checking out the tasty works youtube channel there's a lot of great content on that channel there you can check out some of my previous videos on how to use option strat and uh when i'm building out these trades what i'm looking for all that types of stuff i've kind of mentioned on previous videos this is saying right now the adjustment in which i made is up 45 so as i mentioned i'm not down entirely what you see here because i'm in three of these so i'm up 135 dollars on this and down 190 uh, five dollars on that so you do the difference it's only i'm down less than 100 bucks between uh between opening these two here and that's something that you can do that's difficult to do when you're just trading naked options it's either it's working in your favor or it's not you end up trading very emotional and if that's not working for you just know that there's a lot of alternative ways of trading so catch you guys in the next one leave a comment down below like the video and share it if you learned something take care